want to welcome everybody to Nucho's Nurseries, and uh, my name is Tom. I am Jim Nucho. I am the younger of the two brothers. Uh, Tom is uh, two and a half years older than I am. My dad, when he was 11 years old, fell in love with camellias. Our, our dad and uncle, Julius and Joe, my, my dad's brother, started their nursery in their backyard in Alhambra, which is, which is not too far from about 20 minutes, 30 minutes from here. And it was 1935, it was a backyard nursery. And uh, they kept evicting my grandmother, made her move a clothesline three times in her, in, her, in her vegetable garden four times. So my grandfather figured they needed a bigger place for the nursery, and he found this piece of property in late 1946, and that's when they came up here to this current uh, property here, and we've been here ever since. The initial purchase was about roughly 40 acres, and then a few years later, I don't recall what year, they bought uh, the uh, contiguous 40 acres. My grandfather bought this piece of property because it was affordable. He didn't bother to check if there was any water to the property. And so my dad uh, approached uh, the water company and he asked them, um, can we get any water? He says, we got plenty of water, we don't have any pipe. After World War II, all the metal was used up. And somebody told my dad about this kind of a, a Shady crazy, character? <laughs> well, no, I guess it was a, a kind of, you call him a hippie today, or, 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 or free spirit motorcycle hellraiser guy, you know. He says, flag him down, this guy knows everybody, he may know somebody that has some pipe. So my dad flagged him down, I understand you can find some water pipe for us. The guy says, well, can you come up with a case of whiskey? Uh, the pipe showed up, we don't, no questions asked. So we, the case <laughs> of whiskey was gone. <laughs> I didn't start working here until several years after college. You know, I thought it'd be just temporary. Well, it's been temporary for the last 50 years. So, it's, <laughs> you know, but I enjoy it. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be a farmer. You know, so some would call it city farming. So, yeah. You know, yeah. To me, after college, I uh, I was uh, I got drafted in late October '72, and uh, and uh, spent two years in the army. It's uh, uh, when anybody asks, "Are there any veterans in the crowd?" I kind of raised my hand like this because I was. Uh, I had a pretty easy two years. I was stationed at the Presidio of San Francisco. Then I was on the Army track and field team, and we were stationed at Fort MacArthur in San Pedro. So then after the Army, I, we stayed in the Bay Area, my wife and I, and I was going to grad school at night in business, and I was in a management program at the Bank of Marin, in Marin County. And we just were kind of in between families. My wife's from Southern Oregon, I'm from down here, so we thought, trying to make a move one way or the other. So better weather down here than in Klamath Falls, Oregon. So, so we moved down here in 1980, and I've been here ever since. Right now, this might be the last generation. Uh, we, no, no exit strategy. No exit <laughs> strategy. <laughs> Jim's kids are all doing their thing, you know, and my cousin's kids have all done, done their thing. We got a younger generation, but the oldest one's 13, and who knows what he wants to do, you know, so. As long as we know. stay healthy, we, 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 We'll be here for a while longer, but it, not, not forever, that's for sure. A lot depends on if my right knee can hang in there. It's a little thin <laughs> on cartilage, and uh, uh, one of these days, we'll, when both of us can't get out of bed in the morning, we'll probably make a little conference <laughs> call, and that, that could be it, but that's not going to be tomorrow, hopefully. No, no, hopefully. we plan to do this. I have deliveries to make tomorrow. Uh, hey, so as long as it's more fun than work, I'm going to be here, so. We have kind of aged into being cool, I think. <laughs> they walk around and see all these older things, older office, older adding machines, the older owners, <laughs> and they kind of realize that there are some things that are, have been around for a while in Los Angeles. Not everything is new and squeaky clean in LA. We're definitely not new and squeaky clean, yeah. so that's... <laughs> Jeez, anything but. Because of COVID, people are locked up in their houses and they're taking care of their gardens. We've had a lot of first time customers come in and see us for the first time. Above us is a, what's called Millard Canyon, which is a very popular hiking area. And we've had a lot of people stop in after hiking and walk through the nursery. And most people don't know the types of plants that we have. We've done camellias and azaleas. We've done some other uh, plants in the past, some gardenias at one time, some junipers at one time. But it's always been uh, an emphasis on both camellias and a nice companion plant, azaleas. So we have a lot of varieties of both of those. And through the years, we've developed uh, quite, a, quite a few hybrids uh, from those. We've probably developed about 150 different azalea and camellia varieties over the years. My favorite of our hybrids is, even though it's become somewhat generic, other people, other growers are growing it, is Nuccio's Pearl. And that's just, when it comes out just right, it's just an amazing looking flower. I say Julius Nuccio will be up there. Yeah. 
And I don't think about it much, but when it comes to the bloom ferris wheel, which is probably the largest striped flower of any camellia. But you see a flower ferris wheel, and that's one that people just, even if they don't like the yellow center, it stops them in the track and, 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 to look at it. So the Yuletide's up there. It's a Sanqua, Yuletide. Yeah, Yuletide. It's again see, very the commonly bigger grown. and bigger, the ones I would take. Yeah, yeah, it keeps, <laughs> it'll keep getting, yeah. If I was asked, okay, you're going to take one camellia away from here, which one would it be? And I would give you a different answer tomorrow, but <laughs> give you one today. Some of my favorites uh, are, are Julio Nucho, Nucho's Pearl for a formal, light pink tone, a little deeper on the edge. And then I think uh, Nucho's Gem, of course, for a white. Uh, Silver Wave for a white with the yellow stamens. But those are probably my favorites. Push come to shove and I had to just take a, a couple, couple of plants under each arm and, and, and vacate here. Those would be the ones I would take with me. If somebody in California has, has 10 camellias in the garden, they're probably all going to be japonicas. Japonicas is what everybody thinks of when they think of a camellia. It's still the, uh, the most popular camellia, and makes, make, but japonicas by and large make nice shrubs. Uh, wide range of color, you know, white, pink, red, variegated, uh, multi, multicolor stripes, uh, different shaped flowers and sizes. But japonicas is probably number one, uh, it is number one camellia. The other camellia that is becoming, has become more popular are sasanquas. They are your fall blooming camellias. They are sun hardy, which is a nice thing for Southern California. They can take a lot of sun. They bloom about two months before the uh, japonicas. So their peak season is like, uh, like, uh, like November, December. Uh, they'll start as early as October. Uh, and like your japonicas are more like peak season is January, February. So it's a little bit different season. There's an overlap of color, but uh, your sasanquas are just wonderful landscape camellias. They, uh, they're small flowers, almost like wild roses, a lot of singles, and wide, wide range of growth habit. Upright, fast upright, slow upright, low growing, low growing compact, low growing and sprawly. Uh, half the, uh, the choice of choosing a sasanqua is growth habit as, as, as to the flower. One of the most intelligent thing I've ever heard about Sasanquas, my father used to say that it's too bad they happen to be camellias because people compare them with japonicas. It's just a different plant, you know. Uh, they bloom in the fall and before the japonicas come in and they can take a lot of sun. And then the other group of camellias are the reticulatas. The reticulatas came into this country from China in the late 1940s, if I'm not mistaken. And there's been thousands of hybrids that have been done with those from a camellia hobbyist throughout, throughout the Western world. And uh, they tend to have bigger flowers, they tend to bloom a little bit later than the japonicas, and they, the plants look more tree-like or than bush-like. They tend to be open, almost see-through camellias. Uh, but they're wonderful plants. Our best-selling camellia right now is probably one of the least ornamental. It's uh, called Camellia sinensis. So when you're drinking just your basic Lipton tea, you're drinking, you're drinking a camellia, Camellia sinensis. We have a lot of people who call up and want to buy one or two plants to try, but we've also had quite a few customers who are ordering 50, 100 at a time to try to start a small tea plantation. So that's, that's become our best-selling camellia. Probably our second best-selling camellia is a Sasanqua, one called White Doves. And it's somewhat lower growing, so we do have landscapers who like to plant groups of them to make sort of a semi-ground cover. So I'd say uh, Sinensis, our best-selling camellia, and maybe White Doves might be number two on the, the top of the list. What we do, we collect all our seed every year. And we plant the seed. If there's something looks good, we select the seedling out of that. And then if it looks promising, what we will do on a seedling, uh, we will uh, put a number on it, just a real simple, simple uh, numbering system. Whenever you get a, a new camellia that looks promising, it's always good to make a, a few graphs of it. Two things, to insure it. Number one, if you had the original seedling and you didn't insure it and you lost it, you kick yourself. And it's a good way to test out a seedling. You get three or four graphs of it and you can test it out. And then if you decide to grow it, then you can just start propagating from there and make more of them. It takes probably from the time you see a seedling to the time you actually market it. God, it's... If, about if, 10 years. If, about yeah, 10 if you years. really stepped on it, you could probably do it in five. So something was just spectacular, but more like uh, seven, eight years, I'm gonna say maybe even 10. Yeah. yeah. 
community grown from seed will now bloom for roughly five years, depending. Yep. And when it does bloom, if it looks good, you have one plant and it takes about five years to build your stock up. And the whole time you're evaluating uh, when it blooms and if it has any idiosyncrasies, you know what they are, if it, uh, if it blooms early or late, if it sets buds well or, or is slow to produce flowers, how it grows. So it takes about four or five years to really evaluate a new, a new camellia as to uh, all the different characteristics of it. International Community Society, of, um, I've only been to one convention in my entire life, simply because uh, it's the wrong time of year for us. So it's when, when things are in bloom, we're too busy here. We can't get out of this place. I went to the one in South Africa because the seasons are opposite. It was a quiet time of year for us, a busy time of year for them. And that was a wonderful trip. And it was just a good, enjoyable trip. And then when the, the International came up here, that was a lot of fun. We tried to show them around, but it was almost like herding cats. They were kind of the bus, and they just went five different All directions. directions so. yeah. yeah, it was funny. <laughs> but anyway, no, but that was a lot of fun, though. You're welcome to come to Nucho's and just look around. And uh, 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 any questions, we're happy to answer anything you might want to know about camellias and azaleas. And, uh, and just really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much again.